Hi and welcome, I'm Katie Hacker. Now some of us write our very own story. Today, Sandra Lupo, the inventor of a cone shaping tool set, will create hourglass cone shapes for all sorts of jewelry designs. Welcome, Sandra. Thank you, it's wonderful to be here. Oh, it's great to have you back on the show. Very nice. Thanks for coming. You're welcome. Now last time you were here, we talked about how to make basic cones. That's right. But today we are taking it to the next level. We sure are. We've got some great shapes that will actually give you still the cone shape, but adding dimensions to it. Great. Well, let's take a look at, this is some of what you can do, basic shapes. That's right. Okay, so we've got three different sizes there. There's a small, medium, large, and basically they make it a cone that would be an inch long and would allow you to create a size that you need to uh, uh, finish off a multi-strand or a kumihimo strand. Or make earrings even. Make These earrings. would make great pendants. Yeah. And mm -hmm. you can see there on your samples that you've used different size beads to explain kind of the, the sure. opening end yeah, of the cone. Yeah, the cones, uh, they, they, they stand on their own, but when you cap them with a bead, then it just brings another dimension to it. They look it. great. It makes them make more sense, actually. Sure, and then the medium here, these guys have, all of these have the twist on the one with the beads. That's right. Twist uh, wire. Yes, I like twist wire. I like using different types of wire. And what I can show is with these mandrels, you can actually uh, use different wires and create varied looks well, to suit your custom designs. Right. I think this is just another way of making the piece completely your own. Too. Definitely. And on the hourglass shapes there, some, one of the samples with the coral beads, it looks like you coiled a little piece of wire over the top. I did, sure. If you've got a coiling mechanism or you want to do it by hand, one, one coil at a time, uh, what you do have is then a tube or a core that you can slip another wire in through. And this, again, adds a dimension to your cone, to your cone making. So it's coil cone making then. That's a lot to say. Good job. <laughs> you got it. <laughs> yeah, I good. did it. I did that. <laughs> That's impressive. And making this tool is a really cool idea. Yes, it's been exciting for me. It I really bet. has. And the uh, uh, the possibilities are endless. I'm proving that with uh, this you hourglass sure? shape that is, is fun to work with. All right. Well, let's take a look at the necklace you're making because okay. one of my favorite things you've done so far is with this flat wire. Oh, I love the flat wire. I've seen too. you work with it too. Well, it looks great in this coiled shape. Mm -hmm. You it really does. see that shiny surface. Yeah, I mean, basically it's a coil. It's just that it's a five millimeter flat um, uh, copper wire with a gold plating over it. It's got a nice, um, uh, nice tension to it. So I could actually make this open weave design. Well, let's see how you do it. I certainly will show you. The tool that I work with uh, is a cone making t device and um, I undo, this is actually a storage handle, and out pops the basics, which we discussed last time I was on the show. Right. And now I will show you the new shape, and it is called, let me just screw this base back in. Okay. That'll make it easier to use. Yes, it will. I just like, uh, the base is heavy, but with the screw uh, bottom, it's even heavier, and I like that feel. I like the feel of a metal working tool in my hand when I'm making well, my cones. Well, you have a background in bench jewelry, too. Yes, so yes. You're used to the real deal. I am, thank you. All right, so this is part of the, uh, the one half of the uh, mandrel that creates the hourglass shape. So you and use your little I've, Allen wrench yeah, to just loosen it up? I do, okay. and then also to close it down, you, you put the shank in, and then you just close it up again. I think it's a quarter turn, maybe a little bit more, but it's real simple. Now this has a threaded top, and this is also threaded on the inside, so. Fit them together, yes. ta-da, hourglass, yeah, yeah. smart. And in designing this piece, I wanted to make sure, now this is the large hourglass, and it is quite a heavy tube, it's a solid steel. I wanted to make sure that the user would be able to unscrew easily, rather than holding on to oh, the finished work. So here's a tab, nice neat Perfect. little tab. Well, and okay. what I like too is that you can put this in your vise if you want to. There's a flat spot here, yes. so if you want to work on your bench, And you then you're that. working freehand, basically, which is a great idea. Right with metal working. And uh, these are, this is the wire that I'm using, and okay. I've trimmed it at the end so that it would be easy for me to, let me just put this down here, and work this way. Okay, so There's, you trimmed it on the diagonal? Yes, I did. If you don't trim it on the diagonal, I believe it actually will fit in the set screw too, okay. but this is the guide hole, and this is the place to anchor your wire All right. so that you can begin to do your cone making. Okay. Well, 
Let's hold on. Let me just That's hold okay. on to that. There we go. Okay, here we go. And as I said, this wire has a good firmness to it already. But you're but putting when, quite a bit of tension on it when you... I am. I'm, I'm trying to harness its energy, its power. And you can only do that on a tool that actually um, is solid. Uh, you wouldn't be able to do it on anything uh, flimsy. So I'm shaping it now. Okay. And I'm going to finish the shape. Okay. Okay. Well, and it doesn't have to lay perfectly next to itself because it starts coming together right. the farther you can you hold get it along. down tight with your finger. You could also tape it down if it's important to you. Keep in mind this wire has an energy and it has, it a, has a life of its own. Of it. Exactly. It sure does. But it gets a little bit easier when it comes to the neck or the middle section, you the waistline sometimes there I call go. that. And then you just keep wrapping until you come to the end. Okay. All right, so I'm going to cut it right here so you can see. I'd like to show how to easily un undo the shape. Okay. Undo the mandrel. All right, so of course you can't get it off there unless you turn, turn there you it. There you go. Turn it in reverse, remove this, and then I'll take the Allen wrench. I will remove this from here. Great. Okay, and then I would just cut away where I installed its end wire. And here so is, okay. now this one isn't as complete as this one, but well, it's all a matter of the tension that you give it and how you focus your control. Okay, so controlled wrapping, turning mm -hmm. it and uh, even pressure and take your time. Take your time right? and realize every wire that you use is going to respond differently. Right. So in this case, this is about as close to uh, a sheet of metal as I've been uh, getting with these mandrels. Okay. So, and I'm very happy with the way that they, oh, yeah. they, they, uh, I love this. This looks isn't great. Isn't that great? Yes. And actually the next thing I would do is to, to make the design that I want is I could keep it this way or I can elongate it and I just simple pulling with my fingers to create this so now shape. you have your focal Now element. I've got my focal, exactly. That looks great. These beads here, thank you. You're welcome. All right, this would actually, you're right. Okay, we've got some stringing wire here and I've pre-strung half of this design so that it would be easy for me to show you, let me get this one out of the way, easy for me to show you how to install this set of wires. Now keep in mind, this is a, it's a, it's a multi-strand design. Yeah, so you already have your beading wire and you've crimped the strands together. Yeah. And you can just feed it through your cone. Yes. That's great. My lead wire is, let me just cut this so you that can, it doesn't would bounce. It be, you also could push this back together, maybe a little, maybe I, not at this point. Yeah, yeah, and maybe not at that point, but now I've cut these wires so it might be easier to thread this through. Here we go. And when you get down here, yes, that's what I could have done, just, we just kept go. it that way. Now, either way works. I'm gonna shimmy these beads in there. And there is half, or I would say a third of my design. Right, and now you're going to string, or if you were going on to the next step here, you would string the rest of these same yeah. beads on the I'll other side. I'll shape this a little bit better. And then what I would uh, actually I'm end up with, okay, thank you. Of course. Cones, cones, cones. Okay. What I end up with is this center configuration. Now I have these, uh, you could put cap beads in here if you want, uh, but I've made these little caps just with one of the cone makers. Those look great, one now of the how mandals. do you do that? Well, you can see that it's also a gold color, but this is a twisted wire that I'll use. And I will take one of the new inverted, well not new, one of the uh, latest accessories, this small mandrel. It has a uh, diameter that is smaller than the other two. Okay. And I'm going to take that and install it into the holder, just as I did with the other piece. Oh, I see what you're saying. So when you say inverted, you have the flat part at the top on yes. this mandrel. Yes. The other ones that we've seen have the pointy part at the top. A exactly. Now what's the difference? Well, Besides uh, the shape. It's, I think it's physics. Diameters? I think it's a matter of physics okay. and how a wire moves up to its pinnacle. All 
Right. So with the traditional, you've got all the wires easing up and they want to just shimmy their way all the way up to the tip and not stay at the base. So if you invert the design, then what you have is the ability, and I'll show you how easy it is, okay. to uh, keep, the coi keep the coils and the, co co the cone making down at the, whoops, unravel the wire. Okay, keep it down at the base. We should have put our spool tamer on there, Sandra. <laughs> well, there is a spool tamer here. <laughs> okay, so I've installed it into, I've inserted it into the guide hole, and you don't need to use up that much wire, but I didn't really judge. I'm and sorry. as you can see, it's very simple. Oh, yeah, There's a lot right less, much, much less stress on, on your fingers on the wire, it's real easy. And look at how tight the uh, coils well, are going on. it's really on. nice and even. And when you use the twisted wire too, it makes it sparkle. It's pretty. It does, really pretty. it really does. I can go as far as I want. Uh, in this application, I've trimmed it after about five or six rounds. Now here's something neat Let to understand. You. Thank yeah, you. You're welcome. Here's something neat to understand is that you can't remove this coil unless you remove the cone. So first what I'll do is I will take it out of the holder. All right, then I will trim away the wire from the guide hole so that it can slip oh, off what you're the stem. Right. All right, there's no and, way you'd get it off the other side. And there is your your cone. Perfect, that you makes can a cut great it down. spacer. It you, does. You know, when I saw this, I thought it was a stack of jump rings in there. Okay. So this well, is even better because they won't fall off, one. Right. And two, there's no seam. A exactly. The, on, the yeah. only yeah. cut is at the end. It's so a you pretty look. And, and if you really don't pretty. have the uh, the bead cap or some decorative element that you want, it's yeah. easy to make it. Make your own. So I've really used a very little amount of wire, and I've only used about uh, not even a third of this mandrel. Yeah, that's a great tip for making spacers. So what do we do next? Okay. Let's see. Well, let's continue with the with the necklace idea. Uh, so we're at a point where four, four, uh, I would have installed the other two here and maybe cut these in half or just trim it down to about five rounds. Okay. And then I'm going to continue beading. Now this, the balance of this design is really a floating design. Three strands of a stringing wire on one end and three strands on the other well, side. Well, the illusion design is always popular. Uh, it doesn't go away. No, the floater, never. Right? So you crimped it here on the sides to hold your main elements yeah, in place. Yeah, to keep that tension right there, okay? So then next uh, was beading time. Oh, thank you. Okay, I'm just gonna save this wire for maybe this application here. Okay, so next is beading time. Each of the three strands will get its own beads. In this case, I've put five beads on each strand. And in between each bead, I have put a crimp Small, number one crimp, because the wire is relatively thin. Well, and it's not holding the clasp in place. It's, yes, so it's, it's only functioning it just... to float the pearls. Right. So it, it's, it's A-okay. Super lightweight. Super lightweight. Uh, can I show you how I yes, would? Yes, All right, see. great. So you are not going to use your trusty crimping tool. You're no, just going I think for I'm it. just going to just casually, gently, gently, but effectively float that pearl. And I had strung another one right after it, so I'll bring that close. You know, that's a really good idea to string them all ahead. Yes. Because I don't do that. <laughs> I string them one at a time and measure not, every one, and this is much easier. Not only do I string them ahead, but let's say uh, I have to answer the phone or I have another uh, interruption. I always, after I've strung them on, before I go to the next strand, I will put a little crimp on and, oh, and that's end a good it. Idea. Just really way up there. Yeah. And this way, nothing is going to fall off. You kind off. of have a bead All my work. there. Yes. So well, I, you could be doing this on your bead board too, or you could measure it as you go along, if you want. True, yes. All right, so I would c continue to do this on, the, on this side, as I had done on that side. All right, so you flattened Working, all of these guys. Yes, and then I worked it them up to the end, which is actually, instead of just bringing the three strands into a larger crimp and then a, a crimp cover or wire guardian, I decided to uh, add another of hourglass. Of course you did, of course. Make so, a little decorative element so may there I, the may I make of one? Of course. Okay. Here's the baby, the little, the little mandrel, and I think that is Yes, I'll take that one. Let me just put these over there. And I'll need the baby. Is it this one? Yes. So this is the grandma, <laughs> and uh, the large one's the grandma, like and this is the baby. That's good. All right, same process. Take that, have that Allen wrench or that uh, hex wrench close by. 
insert the small mandrel. Now this one is shaped just like the other in hourglass and it functions the same way. It's threaded and with a little tab. And I will take my uh, twist wire back again. Thank All you. Right. Great. Do you want to hold that for yes, me there? Yes, I'm so keeping it, doesn't... it under control over yes, here. get wild. Okay, so here we go. Put the wire in and with a twist of your wrist, hold it. Now I'm working with my non-dominant hand. I'm comfortable doing it that way. And then the index finger and thumb of my dominant hand are holding. Okay. And again, the power is really coming from the wrist and the ability of the tool to sit comfortably in your, in your hand as you place these wires. Okay. Now you are gonna see some hiking up, but what happens is um, that when you've gotten to the middle, they seem to find their place, and then you can always compress the entire hourglass with a head pin and some beads, and then your shape is better defined. Oh, okay. Okay? But I think I'm, I have a good handle on it here, and it's a gentle process. There's really no tension here. So and now you're just coiling easily. Easily. It's a little as more soon pressure as, at the beginning. As soon as the wire gets to the neck, to the, I call it the waistline, actually, when you think about it. This is a sensual shape, whether it's, <laughs> you know, it really is. You got your goddess we shape got the goddess going shape going. I'm very happy with that notion. I know it. All right. Okay. All right. I want to take it all the way. You can see how nice and tight that is. And again, let's trim here. Trim close. There it goes. That twist wire has a life of its own. Okay, and I'm going to, instead of trying to poke at the, at the wire at the base, I will remove the, uh, I'll remove the mandrel from, from the holder. That's a good idea. Okay, and now you can easily see, I'm going to use Just the tab to unscrew it. Nice. Okay, there it is, that's, the, that's one end. And I will trim this away right here. Trimming is always, trimming twist wire is always a little bit of a, challenge and there is my hourglass shape in the baby mode right so we can see what it will look like mm -hmm. at the end here your beading wire yes. just runs through your pearl your yes. hourglass and the other pearl and using those teardrop shaped pearls is a really good idea because they just seat down in there so beautifully it does it fills it in so uh, i think you had asked me do i install insert beads in the middle you don't need to you don't need to it, it just gives compresses it form. the shape it actually uh it solidifies the form and the beads uh pressing in will solidify the shape. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Well, let's take a look at this earring too that you made. Okay. There's a single example here in the front with the hourglass shape and the flat wire. Yes. But I wanna be sure that we also talk a little bit about the rest of your jewelry here. Okay. So let's start with the earrings here with the tassel. All right, well the earrings are made with the silver color in the same 21 gauge flat wire. Has a width of about five millimeter. And I use the, uh, the baby hourglass mandrel to form that. And it's, it's a perfect place for uh, nestling uh, to any kind of tassels, whether it's uh, threaded tassels or um, a chain, large chain, small chain. Looks it's great. Just, yeah, yeah, yeah. It makes a great topper. Works, works We've made nicely. a lot of tassels. We're mm -hmm. making a lot of tassels this season. Yes, I think, uh, well, I've always loved tassels. I think they've been around and maybe a little ignored or overlooked. Not now, not anymore. No, they are getting the spotlight. Now they tell are. us about the black and white bracelet like the over there. Black and white. This one here is, I just made this up. I wanted to show how tight and how large the coils could be made on the inverted mandrels. There's a choice of three. I use the large mandrel for that, and um, uh, I just enjoyed making that kind of um, uh, yeah. geometric statement. Yeah, those are fun. Yeah, it's a yeah. different look for you. Mm -hmm. I know the aqua colored one, that's an hourglass shape in the middle there too yes. that you're using as a kind of a hanger, a bale. Yeah, yeah, the, the waistline of the hourglass mandrel, whether it's the large or the small, can be defined if you're, you're running it laterally or you know on horizontal. It can be defined with a, uh, with a jump ring so that you could add charms and it, it dangles nicely. Free form great. almost. That yeah. looks great. And then the other piece has this coiling over the top of the inverted cone as well, right? This bracelet right here? Yes, yes. Right. Uh, what I did is I, that's a, a three process. Okay. Uh, coil over core wire, and once I've got the shape on the cone mandrel, then I added another wire on top. And this black and white necklace, total statement piece. Yes, I love it. All right. Well, it is beautiful. These are some wonderful ideas, and I'm going to go make some cones. Thanks, Sandra. Why, thank you.